church? Are you awake? Are you awake now? Well, I guess it's a good thing. You're going to have to wake up earlier next week now. We've got the Molotovs coming up, so we're going to have church early. You'll hear more about that a little later on. Like I mentioned earlier, we've got these. These are new uh, Honky Tonk hymnals. They've got a lot more songs in them. Uh, so, and we're using them this morning. Uh, we've also got some of the old ones uh, that you're welcome to take with you. Uh, these things cost a lot of money. And... Uh, we we started we we started off with about 500 of the old ones I think and we ended up with about 200. Uh, but but we have uh, but we do have some more and uh, and if you'd like to make a donation to uh, help in the offset the cost of printing these new ones you're welcome welcome to but but uh, we'll have these over here by the navigation table uh, after the service if you'd like to pick some of those up. Let's start with just a closer walk with thee. Yeah. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong.
prayer. Father, we thank you for letting us be here today and giving us this place to worship. And uh, we thank you for all, all these people that you put in our lives here to, to encourage us and, and to, to, to give us some of your word when we, when we need it and give us one of your hugs when we need it. Father, we know that we've got some folks out here that are grieving today that, that have uh, suffered a terrible loss. And Father, we pray that you would just put your arms around them and that you would comfort them and uh, encourage them and give them strength and give them a sight of the, the glory to come. And Father, we just pray that you put your arms around Dan and welcome him home. Father. We pray that you would be with all of us that are hurting here today and, and sick, and we pray that you would give us healing, that your spirit just fill this place, uh, and bless your church around the world. These things we pray in Jesus' name, and the church at the floor of Alabama said, Amen. Amen. It's Keith's turn. <laughs>
Mike. Mike. All right, there we are. Good morning. I'm John Mason Smith. I'm part of the Rudder team that puts on this service. I'd like to welcome all of you to the uh, Lower Bama Worship at the Water. I want to welcome, say a special welcome back to our worship bartender, Stephanie. Been gone for two weeks. Oh, and uh, we have a, a large contingency from St. Mark United at this. We don't, uh, we don't pass an offering plate at the floor of Bama. If you feel led to give, though, we'll take that offering. And there's brightly colored tackle boxes that are all around the room. There's one in the back, too, that's kind of blue. Feel free to, to use that, and we, we we're going to use that money to fish for more people. seeing a couple of these go out. We have on top of the tackle boxes and those baskets around, we have connection cards. If you have a prayer concern, we'd like to pray with you. We have a whole team that prays over these. If you need someone to contact you, give your contact information and we will get back in touch with you. Put them in the tackle box. Don't leave them in those baskets out there so we don't miss them. Um, we have a navigation table, which is a lot of information right over here. Normally my wife's there, I don't know where she is. And if, we have free Bibles. If you don't have a Bible, we want you to have one. They're free. Come get one. We have uh, we have two versions over there, and we'd love for you to have the Word. That's a big deal with us. That's some of what we use your money for is to buy those. Um, that uh, also over there is information on other ministries. And Dave Dave Marnell's going to talk a little bit about uh, another one later today. But those sign-up sheets would be over there as well. Um, we also have our honky tonk hymnals. Now Sean mentioned this. We got brand new hymnals, and I got to tell you, you guys sound great when you can actually know the words. <laughs> I was going, man, they never sing out here. Well, they couldn't know the word. Uh, if you want the old ones, we've got two boxes of them. We're going to give them away today. And like, like Sean mentioned, it was about a $5,000 print job. So if you want to throw some money in the taco box, that'd be great. But you don't have to. And we'll be giving them away right over there. Um, we have these cool t-shirts. The Floribama sells these shirts. They order them. They bring them into the shop. They sell them. They give us 100% of the money they come from. So if you're going out, go to the gift shop, buy a Worship at the Water t-shirt, along with i got friends in low places. <laughs> uh, we have a video, too, of the service every week. It's on Facebook. If you look at our, at our bulletin on the back, you'll see the Facebook link. Uh, later on today or tonight, it'll upload, and then at that point, you can watch it again or share it with your friends. You can also put us on, on Twitter. If you just put Flora Bam in your tweet, if you know what that is, then uh, we'll find you and hunt you down. Uh, Molotov is a little different this this year, uh, like last year. We're going to move the service time next week up to 9 a.m. Uh, we, we did it last year and still had 200 people show up at shop. Um, but as you know, 30,000 people will be here that day, so we're just trying to get out of their way. If you try to tell everyone you know, come on down, but be here at 9 a.m. and you won't have to pay to park and you won't have to pay to come in. Just come on in at 9, at 10, leave. <laughs> You can stay and just go back and get the cover Hey, um, so we have a contest for the furthest visitor. We give them a free Worship at the Water t-shirt. Nice. I've got right now British Columbia. Anyone further than British Columbia? Oh, got one. Alaska is further. Yes. Anybody, anybody from Europe or overseas? Anyone not staying? Alaska, you win. I'll be over there in a minute. Stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Find somebody near you and ask them if they ever threw a mullet.
Tuscaloosa where the Tuscaloosa. Uh, the Tuscans are loose. Yeah, no, it's, that's an old, uh, uh, what is it, Canadians, yeah. Mark Brothers, Groucho yeah. Marx, and say Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa where the Tuscans are loose.
got Boston, then we had an accident in Texas, and then locally we had the death of somebody, as far as I know, it came pretty quickly. We just heard about it a day or two ago. Um, Dan, and I might pronounce the uh, last name incorrectly. Is it Rolay? Hope so. If it is not, I apologize. So we're going to take today and we're going to talk about some joy. We're going to talk about Psalm 23. We're going to break it apart a little bit and let us, let us know and realize that Christ, God, is the one to lean on during these times, during these times of brokenness, during these times of unassuredness, during these times of what in the world is going on. Okay, but first, how are the sunbathers doing out there? Hey, Tuscaloosa, welcome. I'm a big college football sports fan, so is that where FSU is? Yeah. <laughs> hey folks out back, how you doing? Yeah. Yeah, a <laughs> uh, little bit of business, next weekend is the Grace Room, and if you haven't been, I'd really offer you a chance to come out there and serve. It is radically different and fun. Um, it's Molotov's weekend, we start Friday at noon. Um, it's crazy. Saturday is just undescribable. It's 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. I have no idea people. And our job really is just to be here and support the staff. Because these poor guys and gals work literally 60 to 80 hours in two and a half days. A lot of them sleep here because their break in between is so short. So what we started doing last year, and it was real successful, is we just go out and we're here to serve them. We support the break room to give them a sanctuary to come into to get away from the noise. Um, if they can't get to the break room, all we do is we load up backpacks and we bring out water and sandwiches and chips and fruit and granola, whatever it might be. And the really cool thing is, this is what happened last year anyway, is that they, they really don't understand why we're doing it. <laughs> why are you all here? Well, let's bring you all some, some water and some food. So you're not being paid for this? No. Why are you here? <laughs> it really is a great experience. So if you are interested, please, there's a sign-up sheet. I know in the bulletin it says Community Center, uh, miscommunication on my part. The sign-up sheet is here, or you can sign up at the Community Center during the week, which is on the main campus right across the bridge. Love to have you come on board. It's a great time. You won't forget it. If nothing else, it's a great time to people watch, because there is no holds barred here that week. <laughs> And the final reminder is, um, what time is service next week? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. How many of you be here? Yeah. I'll see 10 hands, man. What's up with that? <laughs> okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, just thank you so much for this time to get together. Thank you for this wonderful place, this tent, just to throw a party for you every Sunday. Thank you for the band. Oh, they are so gifted. Um, be with our country. Uh, it's been a kind of a turbulent week. Um, some folks are a little bit unsure that there was some, some great closure, we hope, and we hope they got the right people and all the people. Um, and just empty me of me. Um, let me be your Holy Spirit. Let the words come from me be from your words. And let my actions betray your actions. Be with us throughout this week, and let us prepare and get ready for a wild and crazy time of service in the grace room of the Maltos weekend. We love you and thank you in your son's holy name. Amen. Amen. All right, Psalm 23. It is probably, without a doubt, the most quoted, most well-known, and most beloved of all scriptures. In fact, Spurgeon, who is a famous theologian writer, actually compares that song to the song of a nightingale. It's majestic. It's supporting. It holds you up. And if you've been a Christian for more than probably six months, I can pretty much guarantee that you have a coffee cup or a piece of artwork or something that has some version of Psalm 23 on it. It's just that well-known and that well-respected. All who read it, I don't care if you're a kid, if you're an older person, anywhere in between, I don't care if you're successful financially or broke, it will touch you in a simple, simple but deep and profound way. And that's why it's so awesome, is the wording is simple, but it gets you, it hooks you, it gets you downward deep, down where you're just like, wow, that's the kind of relationship I want to have. That psalm has furnished green pastures and still waters for generations, hundreds of years, obviously. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. It's also about restoration. And that's not often talked about with this song, uh, but it really truly is. I mean, there is nothing God would not give up for you, will not do for you, to restore you. Anybody here could use some restoration? Yeah. I know I could. And to kind of bring home the example, I'm gonna bring an example that we do, okay? 
there are two famous pieces of art that were destroyed. Uh, one was Rembrandt's uh, Night Watch, another one was Michelangelo's Pieta, uh, the famous sculpture of Mary with uh, the Degis in her arms. Both were destroyed. Uh, one guy went to scu the sculpture with a mallet, the other guy took a knife to, on a, a knife, and this time it would actually touch three times, but this time a knife. Did he throw it away? No. We humans spent millions of dollars and hours upon hundreds of hours you know, rebuilding these things, restoring these things to their original beauty. Now, if we're going to do that for some works of art, don't you feel pretty comfortable in believing that God's going to do that and more to restore us? So find some faith in that. Find some belief in that. Find joy in that. He will restore us. It also is a time to help us when we are broken. It's a time to lift us up when we don't know where to turn. It's a song to read and read and reread, memorize, put on your walls and refrigerators to help us remember who God is and who we are in the big picture. You know, recall the cries and pain that all of us have you know, felt over the passing of a loved one. Again, I reach out and call out to the family of Dan Relay and Angela Marie. I hope she's here somewhere. I love to meet her. If you're here, please find me after the service. Um, look back in your own memories. I um, mean, associations, times when you were hurting, times when you might, 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 right now actually, you might be lonely or scared. Remember what took place in Boston. Um, I, we're going to read Psalm 23 next, but first I'm going to read a couple of verses out of Psalm 22. The reason why I want to do that is, is that there's, the Psalms are back to back. Psalm 22 could not be more opposite than Psalm 23. So I want to read a couple of verses out of that first, and then I'm going to go into Psalm 23. In the bulletin, we use the message, and that's what I was going to use. But given what happened with the recent passing of Dan, um, I decided to actually, I'm going to read it from the ESV version. It just seems more fitting for the occasion. But it's also good because those of you who aren't familiar with the Bible um, translations, you can follow along and see how they're the same but different. Okay? So these are the two verses I want to read real quickly from Psalm 22. It's verses 1 through 2 and 6 through 8. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from the cries of anguish. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night I find no rest. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. We trust in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. And now we're going to go on to actually Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death, I will feel, I feel, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Man, what pure nectar. What just pure joy. You know, it's, it's impossible to really try and figure out how they was able to write that, but it's so uplifting and it's so tender. And if you're in that dark place, if you're, if you're in that place we all get into once in a while, we're just kind of bumbling around, almost bumping into things, I would urge you to read that verse over and over and over again. You know, it's impossible to ascertain how many people that one verse, how short it is, that one chapter I mean, has affected over the centuries. It's impossible to possibly gather that information. But blessings have been bestowed upon all those who have taken faith in not just David's faithfulness in that chapter, but also your own. So I do this morning is basically break it down and we're going to cover the first sentence more or less because that one, that chapter is just so full of chuckle enough so you can spend the whole, the whole month on it. We're going to break it down into two and if I don't get too long-winded and go down rabbit holes, possibly three points um, based on that first line. The first line is, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Okay, the Lord is. The Lord is. That's all there is to it. How's the Bible start out from the get-go? The very first words are, in the beginning, God. And David plays off of that and says, the Lord is. And that's the really cool thing. The Lord doesn't have any kind of time dimensions. He is. He is yesterday, he is today, he is tomorrow. He's not was, he's not will be. 
the Lord is. He will take that and wrap it around you. And from that beginning, support you in no matter what you do, as long as you reach out to Him. As long as you are obedient to Him. As long as you find your joy in Him and not stuff and not people. The Lord is. We need to understand the Creator who knows more about us than we'll ever know about ourselves. We need to acknowledge Him and yield to Him. I'll give you an idea of how immense He is and how is He is is that if we were to try and create a computer that possibly contained all the facts within even my head, that computer would be almost the size of the world. Why is, it, why is our brain able to do that? Because the Lord is. The moon is at just the right distance from the earth. And the earth crust is just the right distance to support life. Why? Because the Lord is, was, and will be. The earth is water and oxygen for us to breathe and animals to survive and plants to thrive. Why? Because the Lord is. The Hebrew word for Lord is Yahweh. And that translation in Hebrew is the one who causes to be or to exist. The covenant of God of Israel. The one who was. The one who shall be the provider, healer, righteous one, and sanctifier. The one who is present. The one who is our peace. But here's the real question, folks. The Lord is. But what is he to you? That's the real question. The Lord will be Lord no matter what we do. The Lord will do his thing in the Lord's time. The question is, is in your walk, in your faith, in your life, is what is the Lord to you? What does that actually mean to you? And it's a vitally important question. Is He your provider? Is He your shepherd? Is He your one and only? Is He your the most high? And then what does He want to be in your life? Have you ever thought about that? What does God want to be? With someone as lowly as me. And you know what? He wants to be your everything. He wants to be your all. He wants to be your love. He wants to be the focus of your attention. It's that simple and it's that cool. There's a story um, around about a famous uh, preacher whose name was uh, Peter Cartwright. Um, and he, uh, he was uh, a circuit rider way back in the day. Very well known if you're in theology. Um, anyway, there's a story, I don't know if it's true or not, but it's a great story where he stayed overnight at someone's house and was a doctor, and the doctor was a skeptic to say the least. And so the doctor believed that the only thing that could possibly exist are those things that you can get through your senses. Nothing else exists. So this doctor goes to Cartwright and he goes, you know, can you see religion? No. Can you hunger for religion? No. Can you smell religion? Can you taste religion? No. Can you feel religion? Well, yes. And the doctor said, well, therefore I have proved it. It does not exist. Because you can't trust your emotions, you can't trust feelings, therefore there's no religion, there is no God. And then Cartwright responds, and I would love to have been here for this one. In pretending to relieve pain, doctor, you have been playing the hypocrite and practicing fraud on the people. You should be arrested. Well, the doctor, of course, got a little bit more than incense. He got miffed. And before he could say anything else, Cartwright just came back at him following the same logic. Well, sir, did you ever see pain? No. Did you ever smell pain? No. Do you ever taste pain? No. Do you feel pain? Yeah. Well, therefore, following your logic, pain must not exist. <laughs> and that was the end of the story. We have to believe because of belief. We have to believe even though we don't see him right here today, even though that terrible bombing happened in Boston, even though it happened in Texas, we have to believe, we have to find the joy, and just realize that he is here, whether our senses can feel him or not. And no doubt, some of you today, right now, um, and maybe in the past, recently, and definitely in the future, we'll have this question in your mind, is that God, this God really exists on a regular basis? You, you might think that. And all of us, even me, have that fleeting moment where I'm like, man, God, really? What's up with that? When that happens, I urge you, turn to this psalm. He is your shepherd. He will lay you down in green pastures. He will lead you to still waters. Find your strength in that. Truth number two, my shepherd. What a great analogy. What's a shepherd do? Outside of what we see, this standing there with a stick in his hand. They take care of the flock. They lead the flock. They protect the flock. They do everything for the flock. So all the flock has to do is what? Just follow him around. How freeing is that? And all we have to do is lay it down at the cross and let Christ lead. And if you're like me, that's kind of hard because I'll lay it down, but then what do I do? 
I picked the darn thing right back up. How stupid is that? But if we can just be like sheep, innocent lambs, and follow him obediently, you know, how, how freeing is that? And based upon that, a lot of people who are maybe new to Christianity or just don't believe in Christians or other, other religions um, will use that as, a, as that we're saying that it's a crutch. God is only for the weak. God is only for those who can't handle life. You know, God is the, the what's the um, value of, of today's society. Um, but see, I would say this the opposite. I would say that it's when you are weak in the beginnings of wisdom is when you recognize your limitations and have to have a shepherd to worship, worship over you. Quoting Paul from 2 Corinthians, But he, Christ, said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. How many of you folks like to boast about your weaknesses? You know, do you go around and say, Yeah, I'm an awful cook. Isn't that cool? <laughs> or, you know, I have a friend of mine who actually will say this, and it just shocks me. I'm not a really good driver. I'm the kind of driver that, you know, makes people want to get road rage. But, I mean, <laughs> do we walk around boasting about that? That's what Paul is saying he wants to do, is he wants to boast about his weakness because his greatness is made perfect in our weakness. So God's not a crutch. That's how we become strong. At Uncor, when I was there over Easter week, um, the small groups of different churches prayed at every, uh, before every meal. And one of the prayers that was led was kind of a neat analogy. Um, and she goes, you know, your fingers, they're all they're gifts from God. But when you hook on to somebody else, when you allow God to hook in with you, when you rely on other people, look what happens. Those gaps begin to get filled. And that's what a relationship with Christ is about. It's not a crutch. It's not a weakness. It is definitely, definitely the strength. We need a shepherd to lead and feed. I know I do, because I'm an idiot. Spiritually, otherwise we are lost. And this dimension of life is neglected. It will affect your whole life. You'll be like the psalmist who wrote, Why have I been forsaken? Why, dear Lord? The Lord is my shepherd. You must first acknowledge that He is, was, and will be, and He is abundant to those who diligently seek Him. Have it acknowledged the Lord is, follow Him as your shepherd. The shepherd is supposed to lead, and we the sheep are supposed to follow. And in that, there is no want. There is no lack of anything that you might need. Truth number three. It all, excuse me, it needs to be understood that the word want is not, you know, desire, it's not desires, it's needs. You know, I'd love to have a nice truck. I'd love to have a nice big sailboat. I love sailboat, okay? Uh, I would love to have this and have that, but that, that's not really what it's talking about. It's talking about needs. And what are our needs? Well, pretty much you know, water, food, clothing, shelter, but those needs can sometimes change as life events occur. I can assure you right now that folks in Boston have probably some different needs than what they're used to. I can assure you at a time of great loss when you've lost someone in your family that your needs may change a little bit, but overall our needs stay the same. But our needs are going to be a whole lot different than say somebody in a third world country like Haiti or what have you. Their needs are going to be without a doubt. They want water, they want food, they want shelter. And we have all that. So our needs are going to, are, are going to change. So what's interesting is, is that in, in, in the NIV version, there's a Hebrew translation for the word need and it's translated as lack. So therefore, if you were to use that, it would be the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. What is your want today? What is your need today? The Lord, is a capable, the Lord is capable of meeting your needs if you let Him. But you must acknowledge, first of all, that He is. You must yield your life to Him so He can be your shepherd. Then He will meet your need. He makes me lie in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Isn't that just beautiful? 2,000 years later. It's just awesome. It's just awesome, awesome. Mm. So as the band comes up, I made this short because Jeremy's not here. <laughs> They're going to go watch it and I'll get a phone call later, trust me. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, I wonder this morning here, presently, in this group, in this congregation, is there anyone here who wants to allow the Lord to be what He wants to be in your life? Is anybody out there hurting? broken, confused.
confuse, just kind of bumping around life. Now, if you are, say yes. yes. That's the simplest thing to do is just accept the gift of grace, accept the gift of obedience, and just follow Him. It's that simple. Not going to mean your life is going to be better roses, obviously, but there's joy found in just saying here, you take it, I'll follow it. Let Him be your shepherd. If there is someone like that in here today, find someone. Person sitting next to you, a neighbor, I don't know, Jeremy, John, Donna, myself, anybody. Talk to them. Reach out to them. Let them help you to realize the true joy and the only joy. You can be happy without God. I'm not going to lie to you. But happiness is momentary. It goes. I can be happy driving down the road. I've told this story several times. In fact, it just happened last week. We were driving around with Andrew. And then somebody will turn real slow, and I lose it. <laughs> I, just, I flat out lose it. I could be singing a Christian song, and boom, it's gone. <laughs> what we're Amen, talking about brother. is joy, that long-term, sustained feeling, and that can only happen through Christ. You know, so just say yes. Just accept His offer of relationship. Find the joy of allowing Him to be your shepherd. Amen. 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 Yeah. 
Just go back to scripture, read your favorites. I would urge you to make Psalm 23 one of them. It's real simple, real powerful, real deep. Go forth, have a blessed week, and hopefully we'll see you Molotov's weekend. Go God! Amen. So glad morning when this life is over.